Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel Airbus, so what's it doing now? I wanted to put together a very quick video for you that's available uh, on the uh, Airbus Instructors uh, Network about loss of braking. Um, anybody can access this, you don't need to be an instructor, it's quite a useful uh, resource. And the interesting thing is they talk about not just the actual procedure and uh, what it's for uh, and a reminder of the actual memory items, uh, but also about the um, lack of retardation on contaminated runways and how you would detect uh, the uh, loss of braking situation, uh, particularly when the anti-skid is obviously working overtime uh, due to uh, the reduced adhesion, um, uh, but also the threat mitigation and um, why it's important to sort of brief uh, if you are um, uh, landing or operating on contaminated uh, surfaces uh, of how how you would recognize a loss of braking uh, situation. So not my video, this stolen entirely from Airbus, freely available, just thought I'd put it on the channel there uh, to give you a bit of a reminder of the procedure itself uh, and, and some of the uh, threat mitigation. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, thanks for tuning in and see you for another video in the very near future. Thanks very much. Hi Maxime, why a win video for the loss of braking? The flight crews are familiar with this memory item procedure and are regularly trained in the simulator. Hi Gilbert, yes, this is true, but Airbus observed some undue applications of the procedure in operations. Therefore, today we propose to focus on the following points. The purpose of the procedure the criteria of applications of a procedure. The specific case of wet or contaminated runways. And the training recommendations. Gilbert, what is the purpose of this procedure? The memory item procedure of a loss of braking enables the flight crew to manually activate the alternate braking mode without the anti-skid function in the case of a failure of normal braking mode and a failure of the automatic switching from the normal braking mode to the alternate braking mode. Ultimately, if the alternate braking mode without anti-skid fails, the loss of braking procedure requests the use of the parking brake to stop the aircraft. Keep in mind that the procedure associated with the memory item for the loss of braking results in the loss of the nose wheel steering for the A320, the A330 and the A340 and the loss of the anti-skid function for all aircraft types. This means that for the A320, the A330 and the A340, after application of the procedure, the directional control of the aircraft can only be ensured with the rudder at high speed and with differential braking. Maxim, how do the flight crews know that they must apply this procedure? The flight crew must apply the loss of braking procedure only if they do not feel any effect on the deceleration when applying manual braking. This may happen when the pilot flying takes over the auto brake and applies manual braking during a rigid takeoff or landing. This may also happen with manual braking during taxi. Gilbert, why must the flight crew pay attention to the specific case of wet or contaminated runways? 
First of all, the flight crew must keep in mind that the felt deceleration may be less than the one they feel on a dry runway, particularly in the case of standing water or presence of contaminants. On wet or contaminated runways, the pilot may also feel the anti-skid cycling with a small deceleration rate. As per design, the anti-skid cycling results from time to time to short periods of brake release to avoid wheel locking both with and without auto brake. In addition, when the reverse thrust is reduced from rev max to rev idle, the flight crew should be prepared to feel the change in the felt deceleration. In these conditions, while manually braking, the flight crew may feel a loss of brake performance and erroneously apply the loss of braking procedure. This can affect the landing performance and the aircraft handling on ground due to the loss of the nose wheel steering for A320, A330 and A340 aircraft and the loss of the anti-ski. Therefore, the flight crew must be prepared and discuss during the briefing the runway condition and contamination, the stop margins and the plan for the use of deceleration means. This will help to avoid any surprise effect if the anti-skid operates normally in a contaminated area of the runway. In addition, if the weather conditions are expected to change at the landing airport or in the event of significant precipitation, the flight crew should consider a second calculation of the in-flight landing distance with the worst possible runway condition. Maxim, what are the training recommendations? As described in the flight crew training standards manual, the loss of braking must be trained in the simulator in order to memorize and apply the memory items with the associated callout. This can be performed at low speed, for example, during taxi, and at high speed, for example, during landing. Keep in mind that it is recommended to perform at least one of these scenarios with a starter effect. Due to the limitation of the simulated ground model, do not mix a loss of braking with contaminated runway conditions in order to avoid negative training transfer to the operations. Therefore, it is important during the briefing of a session to review the flight crew technique manual to highlight the specific situation of wet or contaminated runway. To conclude, it's important to know and train the memory item procedure for the loss of braking. But it is also key to know when to apply this procedure. Be aware of the risk of confusion between a normal anti-skid operation with reduced brake efficiency on wet or contaminated runway and a real loss of braking. We hope you enjoyed this win video and see you around for the next one.